All right, it's Friday, so it's time to get your stream on with the new shows coming to you online this weekend. On the menu, we've got a show that puts the outbreak of a deadly virus under the microscope, a slick British crime thriller, and an ad adaptation of the 2018 Stephen King horror novel, The Outsider. All right, so here to walk us through all of this is Krutika Mallikarjuna. She is the senior editor at TV Guide. What's up? Thank you How's for joining going? us. All right, up first, I, I gotta admit, I don't think the name is on a great medical police. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like somebody put like working title, medical <laughs> yeah, police. Yeah, and then well, it just stuck. It, it definitely plays into the vibe of the show. Okay, because it says here, brought to you by the team behind Adult Swim's Children's Hospital. Yes, and the team behind Wet Hot American Summer. So that oh, should give movie. you yeah. an idea of the of okay. vibe. Let's play a bit. This virus is killing people, and soon it'll be too late to stop it. We're a secret division of the CDC. We hunt down two things, diseases and criminals. Who's behind this? We want answers. What kind of God would make a virus like that? God's not the bad guy here. We suspect bioterrorism. So okay. I see Craig Robinson, so I kind of yeah. imagine That's, that it's a comedy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. Right? And it's probably a, a decent comedy because he does good stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely it's definitely a comedy. It's a very so loving parody or satire, in the same way Children's Hospital was. Children's Hospital started as like a very short five-minute webisode sort of length series way back on the WB.com when that still existed. Right. I know. And then did a bunch of seasons on Adult Swim in a 15-minute format, and it was a loving parody of Grey's Anatomy, where it was like everyone all. Of the actors and the characters took what they were doing and saying really seriously and that's what sort of made the whole thing so comedic because it's like you know your main character on children's hospital was rob codry who was a sad clown right. who like then became a surgeon you know what i mean right. so this spin-off it actually stars two of the stars of children's hospital aaron hayes is dr lola pratt rob hubble also another very famous you know wet hot american summer alum mm -hmm. as dr owen maestro and basically what happens is they um, <laughs> i know i know basically what happens is they go to a hospital in brazil and this virus uh, outbreak happens and it catches uh, Dr. Lola spreads attention and she calls up her estranged ex played by Rob Hubble oh. as like I need a lift we gotta go save these kids on the land they find a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top of course and they set off on this sort of international spy kind of police detective cop show and it's really funny because there's lines in it that's just like you know, Aaron Hayes is like, I, we're doctors, I we gotta look at ac across the border. And Rob Hubble is behind her and is pointing a gun is like, also apparently cops now. And she's like, yeah, it's, it's high concept. We're still wrapping our heads around it. So if you're a fan of that style of comedy, I would definitely recommend checking it out. All right, all right. I mean, we're just watching the images there. I know, it's funny <laughs> enough. Rolling, yeah. So. All right, good stuff. Uh, next up, we have a British crime thriller on Netflix that focuses on a clash between rival gangs. You close with your brother? Yes, we were. He's wanted in Japan. He has done something terrible. Okay, so this show was named one of the best shows of 2019 by the Telegraph, Daily Telegraph. So what makes it so special? So I really love this crime thriller uh, because it's less of what we're sort of anticipating when we think of, you know, prestige drama crime thriller. thriller. It's way more, um, you know, the framework of the story is used to focus way more in on a personal family angle. Um, Jiri Haji basically translates from Japanese to duty shame. And the story is about these two Japanese brother uh, brothers. One is a detective. The other one sort of falls in with the Yakuza and sets off this chain of events um, and then dies. That sort of brings Tokyo to a brink. And a year after the younger brother's death, uh, the detective is sent to England because they think they've caught a sighting of him. Mm. And then the mystery that unfolds is like this international thriller that's, you know, a Yakuza turf war, but it's happening in London and in Tokyo at the same time. And you get this like sort of fascinating look at what duty and shame actually means when, you know, both of these brothers have done things wrong and both of these brothers have done things right mm. and they just happen to end up on opposite sides of the law. I would also say it's very surreal and dreamy and like a very high art it sort of show. like it, yeah. Um, there's a lot of different film styles in it. There's animated scenes. There's this beautiful like five minute black and white dance sequence. Um, the recaps are animated watercolors. Like there's a lot of genre and medium and tone mixing in this and you know it's 
It's it's a very interesting television experiment. It's, I'm, I'm so into it. it. It's set in England or Japan? Both. Both. It's set in both, and yeah. it's in English, or it's subtitled. It's it's half and half. Oh, so I cool. would say about fifty percent of the show is in Japanese and it's subtitled, but it's worth reading and it's worth paying attention to because they actually use the language tension nice. to pull out these really interesting narrative threads very between cool. all the characters. All right. All right cool. Uh, finally, we have uh, HBO's ten episode adaptation of Stephen King's twenty eighteen horror novel, The Outsider. Mm. Let's take a look. The evidence and the counter evidence. I'm struggling with that. Where are you going with all of this? Is that Terry Maitland? 70 miles away. The same day, the same time as Frankie Peterson was murdered. A human being cannot exist in two realities at the same time. I didn't kill that kid, Ralph. Mm, so things kick off tonight if you're looking for something to do Friday night because it's like two episodes back to back. Yeah, yeah, we get the first two. Uh, so how is this? Because sometimes with Stephen King, and I like Stephen King mm. stuff, sometimes it doesn't always make the best leap to, right. you know, the screen, but what, what's your take on it? Uh, I actually think this is one of the better Stephen King adaptations, mm -hmm. and I say that because I think the original novel was maybe one of his worst. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, that's just my personal opinion, yeah. uh, and people will fight me about that on the internet. But but I think it's one of his sort of like weakest novels, and I think the um, shift to television has actually strengthened it a lot. <laughs> and it's visualized some of these like horrors that felt like maybe a little bit of a repetition in the book in a totally new kind of visual dynamic way that I really enjoy. And um, you know, this one starts off like sounding like any other prestige thriller or cop drama. You know, opens with the body of like a mutilated a teenage boy and it tears this town apart. But like the interesting thing about this series is that the detective investigating the crime, played by Ben Mendelsohn, he's amazing, um, he catches the killer in the first 10 minutes. And yeah. it's a little league coach played by Jason Bateman. Um, but as he continues to investigate this, uh, and you know, the evidence is mounted up against Jason Bateman so high that it's like, obviously this guy did it. But as he continues to investigate the case, he finds evidence that also places him 60 miles from the murder scene at the same time. Yeah. So now the question is, how can he be in two places at once? On another show, it would be like, oh, somebody's working with him. Right. There's like a logical explanation. But this is Stephen but King. But this is Stephen King. Okay. So it turns into a real meditation on like, does evil, is evil something that happens to us or is evil something that comes from within us? Ooh. Yeah. All right. There you really go, Kritika. Good Once stuff. again, giving us stuff to do over the weekend. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you.